about being closer to Jesus. And Psalm 45 is what we call one of the royal psalms in Scripture, because it speaks of a king. Now, it's written by the, um, the, the son, sons of Korah, and it's a contemplation written for the chief musician, musician. musician set to the lilies. There we are. So there must have been a beautiful piece of music called The Lilies, okay? And uh, it's a wedding song, so it could have been written, um, this kind of psalm has a double meaning. So it could have been written for you know, perhaps King Solomon or whatever. But it has a double meaning because it's more than just an earthly king. This is, this is pointing to a heavenly king. He's not an ordinary king. He's a triumphant king. He's not an ordinary king. He's the majestic king. He is the warrior king. He is the king of kings. Yet he is a servant king. Yet he is a mighty king. He's a loving king. He's a forgiving king. But he's a king of justice. He is strong. He is loving. There is wrath. But there is mercy. Jesus has prepared the way for us through his blood. Okay? So here we see a beautiful psalm. And beginning, this just blows my socks off. I said, this year will be a year where the Lord will blow your socks off. You know what I mean by that. Just kind of, the Lord will do expected, unexpected things this year. But he begins by writing this song of love. By saying, my heart, in the NKJV, my heart is overflowing with a good theme. Something good from the king. This guy is so inspired by God. So inspired, he wants to pour out this love song. Deeper than just for a king and a bride. It's a love song about the Messiah and his Right. So in the message version, which is a lovely paraphrase, paraphrase by Eugene Peters, Peterson. And I've heard many preachers go, Eugene, that's amazing, Eugene, because he just has a way of, of paraphrasing, a bit like the Amplified Bible, or the Passion Translation, I would say is another paraphrase. It, it goes into some of the Hebrew and, and the Greek words of this New Testament and brings out the meaning. But here we just see such inspiration. Instead of a heart overflowing or a heart stirred, Eugene translates this as, My heart bursts its banks. Oh, my heart bursts its banks, spilling beauty and goodness, and I pour it out in a poem to the king of a rap or a song or a rhythm or a testimony, or something creative, tapestry, woodwork, modelling clay, plant in the garden, for the glory of God. I pour it out in a poem to the king, shaping the river into words. You see, you are unique and God has called you that way because you are unique. And your words will not be like somebody else's words. Your talent will not be like somebody else's talent. Your gift will not be some, like somebody else's <laughs> gift. But God will shape you as you draw close to Jesus, as he draws close to you. The result is a bursting of the banks in our lives. This is what struck me this week. My heart is stirred through the prayers this week. I felt stirred. I felt uncomfortable. I felt dissatisfied. Because we just know that there's so much more of God. We just know there's so many needs in the world around us. But God, we need you. And I want my heart to burst its banks. Can you put the, the next slide on? Because here's what I felt the Lord say to me. And if you're here Tuesday, you have this bit already, but I'm bringing the rest of it. Pay attention to your heart. What is stirring your heart? The psalmist says, my heart is stirred. My heart is really stirred by this noble thing. My heart is bursting its banks. Pay attention to what God has put in our hearts. 
That's probably what God has called you to do. Pay attention to your heart. And my prayer is that my heart would be more in love with Jesus because the result of prayer and intercession should be we are closer to Jesus. We are closer to him. It's more of his presence because we've been closer to him. It's like 2 Chronicles 7, 14. The result was that he would, when he sees our repentance and when we see we're crying out for him, yes, he forgives our sins, yes, but he comes to heal the land. Something deeper happens in the world around us. So think of a river bursting its banks into the, the world around us. Hearts. More in love with Jesus, hearts like rivers burst in the banks, spilling out the beauty of God, stirred by a good theme, wanting to write good stuff, wanting to declare a different message in this world. In this world of darkness, to declare a message of light. In this world of hate, to declare a message of love. Where there's ugliness all around us, where there's evil, we declare goodness and beautiful things. Whatever is gentle, whatever is beautiful, whatever is kind, it says in the New Testament. Think upon these things. We can get so bogged down, so weighed down by the world around us. We've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Come closer to Jesus. He will come closer to you. But your heart will start bursting its banks that you cannot contain it because you have such passion for people. I wonder when he went to Africa, that he'd come back thinking, man, what about them? What about her? What about him? Oh God, we just want to be there. We just, it's because your heart's spinning its banks, it's bursting its banks. And we should be with, out of a heart of love, our worship should be, our heart of worship should be bursting its banks. Should be spinning out and spinning over. Because our hearts have been stirred by this noble theme as we write our poem for the king. He's not an earthly king. It's the heavenly king. He's not a dead king. All the other religions, religions, right? They pray. Okay? They have a holy book. But our God is not dead. Think about it. Our God is risen. Think about it. Think about it. He is risen. Next slide, please. The psalmist starts talking about the king because he's so in love with the king. He says, you're the handsomest. Handsomest? In other words, you're the most beautiful of men. And every word from your lips is sheer grace. He's God. Jesus is truth. Remember, Jesus is the living word. Jesus is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. In John, we see that Jesus was the Word. He was the Word at the beginning. He was God. He was with God. That's fabulous. That's amazing. God's words, Jesus' words, His King's words are sheer grace. Next slide. And this is what I got out of this. The King's beauty. If we're spending time with Jesus, if we're spending time with the King of Kings, His beauty, His goodness, His presence, His healing, His fragrance is going to rub off on us. It's going to do something in us. As we submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. As we submit, as we come to God's word, he is the living word. See, Jesus is the truth. So therefore, his lips are lips of grace. His lips are lips of truth because he is the word. And I pray that (laughs) the king's beauty in us and out of us, that we hear God's word and words, that we might write those words, that we might be those words, that we might speak those words and declare those words and to show those words, if necessary, if necessary, use words by our actions. But our words, think about our lips being anointed with grace. Think about our lips. Can our lips be filled and anointed with grace that we could never ever accuse anybody? We couldn't say a wrong about anybody else because we're just so close to Jesus. And our life filled with blessing because this is speaking of the Messiah King who is blessed, blessed, blessed. Next one, please. And I love this. Oh, yes. Strap your sword. 
to your side, warrior. Accept praise, accept due honour. Ride majestically, ride triumphantly, ride on the side of truth. He is the king of truth. That's why his lips are anointed with grace and truth, because he is the truth. Strap your sword to your side. In the Bible, what does a sword mean? Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the? The Word of God. So, he's talking about the sword. He's talking about the Word. Because Jesus is the Word. The Messiah King, he is the Word. His lips are anointed with grace. He takes the sword on his side. He's a warrior. But he rides on the side of truth. Um, Verse 4 in the NKJV. Now, in your majesty, ride prosperously. I had to think about that. Because of truth, humility and righteousness. He rides on the side of truth for the cause of truth. Michelle prayed that prayer today. How is to be staying the truth and to speak truth or something about the truth? Nothing but the truth, the whole truth. (laughs) God is riding out. And I love the way Eugene in verse 4 says, Your instructions are glow in the dark. As the world around us gets darker and darker, we are supposed to glow in the dark. I remember having a t-shirt from Niagara Falls when I went there in 1998. I didn't realise it was quite an expensive one, it's in Niagara Falls. And I wore it all day and I hang it up at night. And I turned the light off and it shocked me because that t-shirt was a glow in the dark t-shirt. No wonder it cost so many dollars and Canadian tax on the top. It was a glow in the dark t-shirt. So when the lights went out in the evening, I glow in the dark, a bit like the ready brick man, you know, with the glow. What have you been eating? We can glow in the dark. Next slide. Here's what I found with this verse. Jesus is the warrior king. Yes, he's the Messiah. He's the warrior. He's majestic. He's victorious. Our response, raise the praise. Declare him. Exalt him over everything. But his instructions are that we, he glows in the dark because he's the light. He doesn't just glow. He is the light. What are we? We reflect his light. We be the light. So must we. It talks about how he shoots those sharp arrows. I believe in our intercession, as we get closer to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will train us and sharpen us with spiritual weapons of warfare, according to 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. We have these spiritual weapons. God is sharpening us. As we get closer to him, he sharpens us like a quiver in his hand. Next slide, please. We're getting through this quickly. We're nearly finished. Your throne is God's throne. That's interesting for those who don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. (laughs) Your throne is God's throne, Eugene puts it. Ever and always, the scepter of your royal rule measures right living. You love the right and hate the wrong, because it's holy. That's why God, your very own God, poured fragrant oil on your head, marking you out as a king from among your dear companions. Next slide, please. Because God's throne, the King's throne, the rule and reign of Jesus, his throne is a throne of righteousness. God is establishing his kingdom throne. When we worship him, Jesus is enthroned. But he holds forth the scepter scepter for justice and favor. We can go to God. Hebrews says that we can go, we can ask boldly, Ask boldly, yet we walk in humility. We can ask with authority. Why at Revelation 1.6? Because we are kings and priests unto God the Father. And Colossians 3, we are chosen, holy, and dearly loved. You've got to know who you are. You've got to know what you've got. You've got to know who you are. Then you can intercede. Otherwise, we come to God with our prayer, with a shopping list of, oh God, please help me. I'm begging you again. I'm begging. Why don't we do that? Oh God, please. And it's like, no. We come to God because he's holy. We come to God because he's big. He's a great big God. We've got an itty bitty devil. We're kings and priests. Do you know you're a king? Do you know you're a priest? Do you know you're chosen? You're holy. You're dearly loved. Do you know you're freshly anointed. You're marked out for God. 
marking you out. You are marked. It, it, even Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, has these verses from 6 to 7. Quotes these verses to point to Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, in Hebrews 1. He says, this is who we're talking about. We're talking around Jesus. This is pointing to Jesus. This is who he is. This is who we are. Let's partner with him in this kingdom stuff. You are marked out for God. And it's nearly 12. So feel free to go when you need to. Next slide. Oh, the ozone layer. Remember that? Remember, we had these things in uh, aerosols in the 80s and 90s. CFC. Chelsea Football Club? No, they're CFC free. Oh, right. Everybody had to have deodorant, which was CFC free, to save the ozone layer. Well, I love the way Eugene puts this. Your ozone drenched garments are fragrant with mountain breeze. Chamber music from the throne room makes you want to dance. Woohoo! King's daughters. Ah, now he's talking not just about the king, he's talking about the bridegroom. He's talking about the bride. He's talking about. His church is talking about Israel. He's talking about this love affair. Oh, hang on a minute. It's not just about the Messiah. This is about his bride. He said, now, king's daughters are maids in your court. The bride glittering with golden jewelry. How about that, girls? Now, listen, daughters. Don't miss a word. Forget your country. Put your home behind you. Next slide. This is what I felt God say. The fragrant presence of Jesus, the bridegroom. Music from the throne room. You know, prophetically, the invitation to dance. <laughs> I believe God is going to more and more, as we worship him, is going to release those moments, releasing sounds and worship from heaven, and God will give us the steps to his movement, and we need to let him teach us. Uh, the dance <coughs> is rooted in romance. Uh-oh, all well, the guys go, <laughs> romance, <laughs> awkward. Yeah, but it's like, no, no, you're loved by God. You're his bride, he loves you. But he, he I can see, but he can, he can, he, he wants to invite you into his, 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 his dance, his romance. You see, to dance with somebody, oh, I want to dance with somebody, what if you think? With somebody, that's a kind of the wrong kind of dance. But the thing is, you try and love somebody, if I want to hug Kerry, I'm going to hug Kerry. Right? I can't, it's hard to love at a distance. Go, go, gadget arms. But you've got to be close. So you draw an to God, he will draw an to you. Okay? This is an invitation. He wants to give us his steps to his movement, his dance in the spirit. The dance is rooted in romance. But pay attention. Verse 10, now listen, daughter. Don't miss a word. Forget your country. Put your home behind you. Oh, please don't move to Africa. We love you. <laughs> But if you got to, that's okay. I'm just saying, it's not prophetic, by the way, I'm just saying. But now listen to it, don't miss a word, forget your country, Africa, but your home behind you. In other words, we've got to pay attention to his commands. Don't miss a word. Where are you called? You've got to know where you are called. And stay there, and be there, and forget the past. She had to forget her country. She had to forget her father, doting on her father and her grandfather. She had to think about the sons. Next slide. And we finish with this. Next slide. Again. Okay, be here. The king is wild for you. Go on, guys, we bless you. It's okay to go. The king is wild for you, since he's your lord. Adore him. Wedding gifts pour in from Tyre. Rich guests shower you with presents. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful um, picture of a wedding. Hope you win the football. God bless you. All her dresses and robes are woven with gold. She is led to the king. She is led to the king. Woo-hoo. She's led to the king. The Holy Spirit's job is to lead you to truth. Jesus is the spirit of truth. We've been led to the king. It's our job. Description to lead others to to the king. I love those bookmarks. They're great. Be here in your presence. That's where I want to be. I want to be there in your presence, getting closer to Jesus, adoring Him. Eyes on Jesus. You know when you watch those detective programs or those special agents, and then looking after somebody. 
Eyes on, eyes on suspect, I see one male over, Charlie 540 on Oscar Stephen over, eyes on, eyes on, I have eyes on on target over, eyes on on target, eyes on, eyes on Jesus, yes, eyes on Jesus, coming in, spiritual warfare, we need to pray for this, eyes on Jesus, okay, don't listen to the devil's lies, eyes on Jesus, over and out, cheese and ham, cheese and ham, I have tuna, thank you, keep your eyes on Jesus, Two-way radio. Psalm one to one. Lift up your eyes. Look to the mountains. Where does your help come from? <coughs> Jeremiah thirty-three three. Call, and I will answer you. <coughs> this is pointing to the wedding supper of the Lamb. We could go on cross references and and stuff, but we won't. But Revelation nineteen talks about. The wedding supper of the Lamb, the Bride. And you see the fresh garments there are the acts of right living and holiness. Of the righteousness of the saints because of Jesus. And here you see the Bride, you see, you see the, the gold in her, in her dress. It's pointing to something which is to come. And the Bride adores Jesus it points to the wedding supper of the Lamb and God is preparing you and me. We're led to the King. We lead others to Him. And it talks about a procession. And we join that procession in worship and intercession. And that rhymes. And I love rhymes. That's the way I roll. But join the procession with praise and intercession. Join the procession. You're invited. It's like having better than being invited to have tea with the King. Going to Buckingham Palace. Typo, gone the, the go through the new door. It's a grand entrance. Enter into the king. Next slide. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Set your mind now. So you're talking to the bride. Right? Don't remember your father's house. Don't remember the country where you're from. Don't remember that now. Now's the time for the next generation. Set your mind now. Set your mind on what I'm setting up in the earth. Think about that. What is God doing here at Sandy Hill? Families, children, youth. As well as the others, so many others, and so many other people groups we want to reach. And we will. It's part of the big plan. Next slide. But here's what I mean. We need to refocus not having loyalty to the past, the wrong kind of loyalty. It's good to honour the past, but we get in trouble if we have just loyalty for loyalty's sake to the past. Because when God's doing something in the next generation, he has in mind multiplication. Multiplication. <coughs> Sounds like maths to me. I think you've had that in your sermon last week as well from Dad. The next generation. Star Trek, the next generation. They always bring out another series, don't they? Like the next generation, the next generation after that. <laughs> God's setting him up. God's going to set us up. Divine setups and suddenlies this year and next year. There's going to be setups, there's going to be interesting things, suddenlies. Seeing the kingdom of God increasing. And I love the way he says, you'll be the talk of the town. <laughs> Revival town. That's what they call in this place now. <laughs> Used to be a song by Delirious. Revival town. That's what they're calling this place now. It's God's town because God is in town. And people who wouldn't necessarily come to church will end up becoming saved. Because somebody told them. Or they have such conviction because we've repented and God is coming to heal the land. God, oh, and God gets all the glory because his name is exalted over a place, over a region, over a country. I'll make you famous for generations. You'll be the talk of the town. Next slide as we come to the end. That was the last one? Yeah. Okay. So, we can be blessed. We can be closer to Jesus. Psalm 45 talks about the glory of the Messiah and his bride. So know who you are, know whose you are, and know you've got a part to play. That he loves you, 
that there's a kingdom plan, that there's a shift, there's a change of focus. But let your heart be stirred. Maybe stay in Psalm um, eight, uh, 40, 45 verse 1 for a while. My heart is stirred by a good theme. Allowing your heart to be stirred. That's a good place to start, guys and gals. That's a good place to start. As you pray, as you continue to pray, as we work out the discern the mind and the will of God for the future here at Sandy Hill, we can have our hearts stirred. What are you saying? Where do you want us to burst our backs? Where are we going to shake the river with these beautiful words? What are you doing? Nothing else matters. But I want to serve you, Jesus. I want to fall in love more with Jesus. Because he's the inspiration. He's the reason why we do what we do. He's the reason why we're here. God, what are you building? What kingdom thing are you doing in our midst? And how... And how, Lord, do you want us to work with you in this? It's what I believe God's saying. So the words of James, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. But let's be stirred by the word. Lord Jesus, let's pray. Lord Jesus, a lot of information, but Father God, I pray for your spirit's transformation. Help us to realise that you are that beautiful bridegroom king, warrior king, the word. And we want to be, Lord, followers of you. We want to be your bride. We are your bride. And you invite us into this love affair through prayer. Lord, where we're stirred through the word. Lord Jesus, where we get into position. Because, Lord, you're sending us on a great commission. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We pray, Father, Lord, that we will continue to draw close to you in days such as these so that other people can be led to Jesus, the King of kings. Open our eyes. Take the veil away, Lord Jesus. Show us how much you love us. Show us, Lord, that we are dearly loved, holy and chosen, that we are kings and priests, that we've got a job to do. Lord God, keep us from just being Sunday Christians a couple of hours a week but Lord help us every day to live it out to live it out Lord Jesus to be so close to you we would hear your commands that we would pay attention to what you are saying that we would consider what you are saying that we would walk in obedience to you Father out of a heart of love in Jesus name Amen Amen wow what you've been making then come on then these are good, aren't they? Uh huh. So it's good. So what are these bookmarks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it say on there? Oh, look. Oh, they're beautiful colours and there's little, little things in there. And what's on the back? What's on the back? Oh, the hand. Oh, handmade with love. Isn't that lovely? And I like the golden tassels. That's kind of what we've been talking about today. Because uh, another thing in um, Psalm, uh, Psalm 45 is, um, in some of the versions, is the multicoloured, um, a coat of many colours almost, that the bride wears, interlaid with gold. So there you have it. And it's handmade with love. So well done, guys. Yes, sister, yes. Yeah. Do you want to show you don't want to? You don't need any Yes. Oh, come on then. Oh, then this one. Who's done this one? My sister did it. Good. So sister Ronnie. And what colour is that? Is that blue? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. And what's it in the back as well? And made in love. And made to worship. That is really good. One. Who taught you out there today? My mum. Your mum and Lorraine. Very good. She's very good at this thing, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good, isn't it? Well, well done, Corey. And God gets all the glory, glory. Amen. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Well done. Well done. Oh, bless. <laughs> Wonderful.